Hey, this is Neil, and I got this question as something that I was, should have answered uh, in my Quora feed. And the question is, why wouldn't I buy dividend-paying stocks? Are there risks? And the short answer is, of course, there's always risks. Um, but there's actually fewer risks with a company that pays a dividend versus a company that does not. And um, basically, a company that does not might succeed, it might not, and you are, you know, left playing the greater fool theory where you buy something you know stock for let's say fifty dollars and you hope to sell it for sixty and that may or may not happen just depending on how the market goes how the news for that particular company goes and um, that's always the the issue with speculation is that there's nothing to rely on it's just expectations so with the dividend paying stock though it's a bit different so I wanted to make a little chart here um, that kind of shows the cash flow so uh, this is our company, right? And it makes money by doing sales. So that money is coming in. Sales. OK. And then we have, let's make this green for money, right? All right. So inside the company, uh, the sales come in, and obviously it has to spend money on whatever its operations are, its cost of goods, its administrative staff, and so on. So this. Here we're left with um, some portion of earnings. And that cash piles up in the bank account. And then out of the company comes a smaller, usually a smaller uh, cash flow of dividends. And again, green for money. And then you as the actual shareholder you get, well, your, your orange, and you get uh, whatever that cash flow is. So when you're looking at a company's uh, dividend statement, um, there's a couple things to consider. The first thing to consider is how stable has that dividend been over time? Uh, some companies will issue one one year and then not another year. Um, some will go a multiple year periods, but then during a financial hardship, like during the, you know, uh, you know, 2007, 8 uh, recession, they suspended earnings. Um, I think Ford did that. Uh, and then other companies have, you know, solid, you know, 50 year histories of, um, of paying out the dividends and then growing them over time. So there's, there's a couple things to, to factor in there. So the first thing is that, you know, how are the sales doing for that company? Are they steady? Are they cyclical? Are they growing? Are they shrinking? Uh, because that's where the fundamental money comes from. So, you know, how is the health of that company in relation to its sales? How are the earnings uh, in relation to the sales and the company's overall health? Are earnings as a percentage of sales growing? Are they shrinking? Uh, you know, what's going on? And, uh, you know, earnings is always a tricky kind of thing because, you know, the way companies like to report things, they'll do, you know, like a gap reporting and then non-gap reporting with, you know, one-time charges and whatnot. Um, so you have to you have to really consider how reliable those earnings numbers are, and then what is the relation of earnings to dividends? So if the dividends are 150% of the earnings, that's not going to be sustainable, uh, no matter what, just because the company is you know eating away at its balance sheet, and so eventually it's going to hit zero. Um, if earnings are, or if, sorry, if dividends are 30% of earnings, then that is sustainable because they can continue to pay out 30% and you can continue to receive that income. So, um, you know, those, those kinds of factors are where the risks in, lie. So, uh, you know, the reliability of the dividend itself, the reliability of the sales coming into the company, the sales turning into earnings, and then those earnings turning into dividends. Each one of those steps creates an opportunity for risk. And, uh, you know, there's also the, the marketing side of things. So a company that's been paying out uh, for a number of years will have uh, uh, public relations issues that they will consider if they think about cutting their dividends or even eliminating them. So they might go negative on earnings in order to pay dividends just to keep the dividend alive. Because, you know, once they start reducing or eliminating dividends, then that makes people that much less likely to buy the stock in the future. So um, you have to 
you have to consider all those things as far as risks. Now, every dividend you receive does reduce your overall risk because it's reducing your basis in the position. So, you know, if you are a shareholder for a number of years, it could be, and you know, if you reinvest as you go, compared to your original capital contribution, you might have a basis of zero because you've, through reinvestment and the cash flow of those new dividends, uh, you might, um, you know, have gotten all your money back plus some. So if you look at Warren Buffett stocks and like Coca-Cola, he's got massive positions there, and the dividends that that he receives or through uh, Berkshire Hathaway receives is actually more than the original amount that they put in because they've held it for a long time, they've reinvested, and they've grown with that company. So, um, you know, cash in, in your hand is always going to be more reliable than asset prices in the market because, uh, as we've seen, asset prices are pretty volatile. They can be cut in half with the overall market. They can double or triple with the overall market. Um, and then there's, you know, company-specific issues. So, Overall, a dividend-paying stock is going to be more reliable, less risky than a non-dividend-paying stock, but there are still risks, and you have to evaluate each company on a case-by-case -case basis. Hope that helps.